Welcome to 23 Degrees Sideways. You're going to have to deal with a little bit of sun glare there. The uh, sun is in a particular spot right now. Wow, talk about wind blown. It's a very windy day. We're having a spring storm and it's fantastic. So we've had the Pineapple Express. We've had Pacific weather systems floating through the entire west. What, north to south, doesn't matter where you are. I'm down in the southern section right now. Um, just for continuously for weeks. It's been fantastic. And this is a normal weather cycle. So there will be drought conditions in a couple of months, a couple of weeks. And that's just remember, drought is a condition of the environment where I am, not a crisis. Does that make sense? It's, it's I don't think it makes sense to people anymore. Speaking of which, um, right now I'm in the Valley of the Sun, so the Phoenix region, and Peter Zion was here recently and he did a little video on, on his channel and he was standing in Phoenix and he made an offhand remark about how that there's no more artificial city than Phoenix ever. It makes Las Vegas look like a uh, <clears throat> green paradise. And this is one of those things where if you pay attention to Peter, you, you, you have to really make some judgments on where you think he's coming from and what he actually knows about. You know, and in dealing with industrial age, consumer global economics, he's pretty good. Population demographics, he's pretty good. He's not saying anything new, but he's, he's pretty good. He's pretty aware. Um, but other stuff, I don't really, you know, sometimes he just has opinions because he can. So he calls himself a green who is unpopular because he's a green who can do math. So that's not really true. What he is, is he's an alternative energy advocate who can do math. Okay, he doesn't believe in zero, zero effort energy and pie in the sky stuff, but he's not actually an environmentalist. In, in terms of being a green, he's just an alternative energy guy. He's not an environmentalist. Phoenix is not here because it's an artificial city. It didn't, it didn't get invented as an artificial, artificial city like Vegas actually kind of did. Like Vegas came about for artificial reasons. You know, there there is <clears throat> there is some water there and there were people there, but it came, it came into being because of economics. Um, our exterior economics, artificial demand, gambling basically. Um, gambling and prostitution. Phoenix is a farming area. Fundamentally, when you get right down to it, what caused the Valley of the Sun to happen is agriculture. It's not an artificial city, and Peter doesn't get that. And that's like the big, big thing. He just doesn't really get it. You know, he understands agriculture in terms of industrial inputs and outputs. Like, if it's, if it's about processed food, the guy knows where to put the numbers in. But when it comes to agriculture and rainfall and actual water and life cycles and how you can have animal-based agriculture that produces fertile soils and, and why a city like Phoenix would exist, he's not an environmentalist. He's not. He's, he's a um, suburban consumerist, you know, and that's basic, basically what it is. Phoenix is here because of water, because of abundant water and pasturage here. Agriculture here, not because the water get, gets piped from somewhere else. We do have canals. We have an excellent canal system in this area. It's called the Central Arizona Project. It is huge and massive and wonderful and has led to expanding massively the native <coughs> self-supporting agriculture. And I don't mean native as in indigenous American Indians. I mean native as in native um, biosphere, like the native ecology. 
okay? Pretty good stuff. There's, it's, it's a very nice area to grow stuff, to live, and we brought more water in to expand that. But it's here, it's already here. We have rivers, we have like three of them. Um, well, 17 if you want to count seasonal rivers. It's nothing like Los Angeles. Like, if you want to talk about an artificial city in Peter Zayn's terms, you know, you can, there, there are pipes. There's like five big ones that go over the mountains into Los Angeles from other states, right? And you can walk up to these things and you see them. You used to be able to walk up to them. You can't get near them now. And they're bigger than you. Like, the interior diameter of these things is huge. It's an immense, insane amount of water. The Los Angeles Basin is great. Wonderful, absolutely fantastic, fertile, green land with plenty of water for 500,000 people. And that's going, that's counting like all of the Riverside, San Fernando Valley. That's like the whole thing, right? Orange County, the, the, the whole space. Not like 12, 15 million. So they, they bring a lot of water in more artificial, much more artificial than Phoenix. And this is where I feel like there's a lot of people in the green movement who don't understand the basics. Like, they don't want to understand the basics. They don't want to talk about it. You know, they want, they, they want to use, if, if they use statistics about agriculture for anything, it's to prove a point. It's to say that meat is bad or processed food is bad or something. Like, they, they have an agenda and then they try to find a statistic to support it. They're not looking at, hey, how does this work, you know? And that's, that's a really important thing, really important distinction. So I just wanted to talk about that for a minute. This is kind of a general channel update because I haven't done anything in a while and I'm doing stuff and I want to record. I'm just, I'm very rarely in a spot where I'm alone and can do any recording right now. Um, if I'm at the house, there are interruptions pretty continuously. If I'm out, it's spring, man. There's wind. Always wind. There's always something, right? So um, I'm working on a lot of writing. I'm doing a lot of physical stuff, right? You can probably tell I'm rather tanned. Um, I'm out outdoors a lot, so, you know, that's all a big deal. What else? What else do we have going on, you know? I'm just riffing on, on my basics, you know, do stuff, things happen, freedom is an act of rebellion. This is one that that I, I really am trying to figure out ways to put into people's heads. Freedom is an act of rebellion. You do have to claim your independence from what other people are trying to program you as a need. And that doesn't mean being antisocial. It doesn't mean ignoring your loved ones. It might mean ignoring media. It might mean ignoring government. It might mean ignoring the large segments of society whose interests are the reflection of a few powerful people, not actually the better good, if you could define a better good. And that's kind of hard to do because your version of a better good might not match someone else's version of a better good. And so we come to freedom, which is fundamentally an act of rebellion. And that's just, you know, it's kind of a big deal. Um, what else? Reminder, if you're listening to this in March, April, or May, it is still spring. It's still spring. Um, the weather's going to be wacky. There's tons and tons of weather systems coming over the Pacific. It's just fantastic. You know, you're going to have wind. You're going to have cold days. I've already said several times that this is going to be one of the weird years where weather is a little bit erratic. They happen. It's not global warming. They just happen. Um, and so you might see snow in some places where it doesn't usually snow after April, like in June. Um, and speaking of, it's almost April. It's just two days away as I record this. Um, it snows in April in large parts of the country at least a little bit. So don't buy into the scare tactics that the media gives you when it snows somewhere in April. Okay, just be aware, it's spring. Love it and enjoy it. And go touch grass, you know, touch grass. 
uh, go outside, get outside more. The weather is changing, the solar cycle is changing. I tend to sleep less at this time of year, and uh, you might also, but feel the rhythm, feel it, go with it, go with the nature. See the sunlight, open the windows, open the blinds. Even if you're stuck on the computer all day, get some sunlight into your eyes, right? Do the things and move every hour. No matter what your job is, get up and do something slightly strenuous, all right? These are the advices of the month. So, you know, tell me how it goes. Do something strenuous every hour. Get up, you know? That's, uh, that's a big thing. And um, challenge, you know? If it comes in a package, don't eat it. That's the challenge. That's the always challenge, and it is a hard one in a consumerist world where everything and everyone around you is trying to sell you on the yummies. You know, we're gonna have to talk about that later. You know, there might be might be a point to having voluntary restrictions. Some things being hard. You know, um, a life of ease is actually a really wonderful thing, and and honestly, very stimulating. If the ease is in the right places. I don't think your food supply should be an area of ease, you know. Think about that one for a minute, and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Stay sideways.